A while back I made a video where I talked about the importance of the break-in period for a 1911 pistol and that video actually became just a little bit controversial for some people so what I wanted to do here is to actually make another video explaining a little more about that. Now uh, if you're a 1911 fan, if you're someone who is curious about 1911 uh, this is just a little bit of a conversation that may interest you. You may want to go back and check out that other video. I know there were some people that were critical of the 1911s because I said that it is a good idea for them to have a break-in period. I actually demonstrated some of the reasons using this firearm right here. This is my TSOS 1911 stainless commander size absolutely love this gun. This is one that I have carried on many occasions. If I'm going to go carry a 1911, this is one of them that I will carry. This is a great firearm. Uh, I have put it through the paces. It does have the round count through it now. It has shown itself to be very reliable with the self-defense loads that I would prefer carrying. So it is a great firearm in my opinion. Now what I have with it is my Taurus PT-1911 and because of the uh, way that YouTube is I am not showing any kind of disassembly or anything like that guys. This is just the way that YouTube is and for those who may be watching this video from YouTube you can see it's already apart. I'm not going to be showing how to build, modify, put together or anything like that. What typically happens when a 1911 is machined is uh, any machining process, there's going to be minor levels of uh, imperfections. Okay, And it's the same with any gun. A uh, big difference is the design of the 1911. You know, the way that the gun functions and things like that are going to play into how machining imperfections can affect different guns. Good manufacturers of 1911s will put through the extra effort to get those tolerances just right, to polish off those mating surfaces just the way that they should, and that is a big critical component of the 1911 as far as how that it will work. Now, the uh, 1911, if once they are machined, and I'm going to show you just a little bit of a close-up here, you can kind of see how on my Taurus that there is a little bit of, uh, I guess you could say, the shiny strip that's running right here down the rail. And that is because of this gun being ran. Now, this gun is still... Uh, I've not had a large number of rounds through this gun, so that's why there's actually some of the finish that's still there. You know, I have others where the finish has a lot more wear right on the rails and things like that. Plus, when I run my guns, I like to take care of them, as many of you all know, so I do try to keep them well lubricated. Okay, that is something uh, that should be noted as well. But what typically happens in the machining process, uh, you may not be able to see all of those fine imperfections that are part of the mating surfaces once these components are manufactured. Okay, what happens over time with those components sliding together, with them working together the way that they should, all of those little burrs, those little imperfections that are on the firearm will work themselves out. You know, the continued sliding back and forth, if you have a burr on that, it is going to eventually work its way out. It just That's the polishing action of it as the gun is cycled. And that is why the break-in period is a critical, important thing for a lot of 1911s. Typically, good manufacturers these days, a couple hundred rounds, and you are pretty much good to go. You're going to know within a first few hundred rounds whether or not that gun's going to be reliable or not. 
This one here, uh, as you've seen in that previous video, how that right out of the box it was wanting to hang up, things like that. But after I got a couple hundred rounds through it, this gun runs everything that I've put through it with no problems whatsoever. However, you do need to also consider the magazines that you're using, particularly when a 1911. If you do not use a quality magazine, you are going to have issues with that firearm. Okay, a magazine can make or break a 1911. I know there's a lot of cheap manufacturers out there where you can get magazines for little nothing, but the problem is with those magazines is they will not run in some guns. You can take the best 1911 out there, put a bad magazine in it, it's not going to run. Okay, that's just the way that it is. A magazine plays a critical role in any 1911. As I mentioned earlier, this is one of the 1911s that I carry. Uh, when I do decide to carry a 1911, it is this one. It has shown itself to be reliable to fit that bill for those times to where I just feel like carrying a 1911. Uh, there's also a just a bit of nostalgia with carrying one of these firearms, so that's one of the things that I really enjoy about it. Some people like 1911s, some people hate them. Personally me, I am a fan, I have several, and I really enjoy shooting them. That does not mean that I will carry all of my 1911s. I do have some of them that as of yet I do not have the round count through that I do not feel confident enough in to carry that as a self-defense firearm. This one, however, I will have to say that I do, simply because I have put it through its paces, I do have the round counts through it, and it has shown itself to be reliable. Okay, there's a couple others that I have as well. I have carried this Taurus. It has also shown itself to be reliable and had no issues with it as well. Uh, if you go back to when I did a video on this, which I will try to leave a link up in the corner to where you guys can check that out. When I first got this gun, it was used, however, it was only slightly used. I could not really tell much use of this firearm when I bought it. I did have one or two hiccups uh, because there again, the gun had not had many rounds through it at that time. But just like with this one, just like with other 1911s that I have, uh, once I have got the round count through them, I have not had any more issues. But at the same time, some of those 1911s, I do not have the count through to where I would carry it. This one I do. This is my TSOS commander size. I love this firearm. It is a great gun. But guys, just remember, if you hear people talk about the reliability of a 1911 as far as why you need to have a break-in period with them, it is because the way that they are designed, just to kind of sum up this video, the way that they are designed combined with some of the imperfections in the machining process uh, as those parts work together as they function together they're basically going to polish themselves down to where they will run together and fit together a little more smoothly some of your higher end 1911s uh, some of those that are hand fit things like that the, depending on the manufacturer, the particular gun manufacturer, sometimes they will actually invest the time to polish those surfaces much better, much more refined, and that does help some of them work a little bit better. But again, some of these custom 1911 manufacturers will tell you that you need to put uh, round counts through them. Uh, if you have a less bear out there, they will tell you that you are going to need to get at least 500 rounds through that gun before you even think about calling them with an issue. That's just the way that they work. Those guns are very tight, uh, very nice firearms. I do not have any of those. I've had my hands on them. I do not personally own one, maybe sometime in the future, but not now. But even them, uh, there are minor imperfections that necessarily cannot be seen with the human eye or anything like that. But if you were to put the, uh, the precision equipment on those, you would see uh, the uh, what I'm talking about. You would see a little bit of differences, a little bit of variation in some of the machining process. Uh, you would see, uh, under a microscope, you would see uh, the surface, even though we think that it's smooth, it isn't necessarily smooth. Okay, If you were to just like some of these videos and pictures out there to where they show a, uh, a the edge of a knife under a microscope uh, you know something that is razor sharp if you look at it under a microscope it looks very jagged uh, with the finishes with the mating surfaces on a gun uh, those you know those imperfections they're nowhere near as smooth as we necessarily think they are however the action of the gun cycling against itself 
of it being ran, then it will actually work to polish out some of those imperfections. But guys, this is just a quick video that I wanted to do. Just a little bit further explanation for some of you folks who are still not sure about 1911s, who are unfamiliar with the platform, uh, and have had um, you know a lot of things online. If you've uh, seen and heard some of the stuff where people have talked about them. You know, that's just a little bit more information for you. Again, my personal uh, opinion in whatever gun you decide to carry, whether it is a Glock, whether it is a 1911, whether it is SIG or whatever, if you are going to use that firearm to protect your life, you need to get it to the range. You need to put the rounds through it because even the best uh, gun out there, uh, there are failures in all of them. There are failures in Glocks. There's failures in SIG. There's not a gun manufacturer out there that has not had a failure at some point in a firearm that they've made. So if you're going to use a firearm to protect yourself and your family, then you need to know for sure that the gun is going to work when you need it to. And the only way for that to happen is to get it to the range and shoot it. But guys, this is just a quick video that I wanted to do. A little bit better explanation on why the break-in period uh, is important for the 1911 and that way uh, hopefully it'll answer a few more questions uh, i'm sure that some of you guys out there that are fans of 1911s already know this uh, if you are not sure about the 1911 you're just trying to find more information for yourself hopefully this is something that's a little bit more helpful to you guys thanks for watching be sure to check out the rest of the videos on my channel go back and check out the other the unboxing video on this i'll try to leave a card up in the corner that way you can go and check this out uh, but guys thanks for watching check out the rest of the videos on my channel check out all of the links down in the description i do have some new t-shirts for sale that are linked down there below the video and we will see you next time